Let's do this problem in which we have to show that the magnetic field created by a line current is a solenoidal field. Okay, so we have here a line current. So let's imagine our xy plane. And we have a line current passing through the origin. So let's say the origin is here and it's oriented along z. Okay, so this is our line current. So then you know that the magnetic field of this line current follows the right hand rule. So it would look something like this, right? And it would be like this in every single value of Z. Okay? So the expression for this magnetic field is well known and it is written here. This is the magnetic field. We have the permeability of free space, which is a constant the current of the wire, the, the distance to the z-axis, which is rho, and then the unit vector in cylindrical or in polar coordinates, if I had. Okay, and this is the magnetic field of the current. So we need to prove that it is solenoidal. So therefore, what we need to prove is that if B as a function of position is given by this, we need to prove that the divergence of B is equal to zero. Okay, we need to show that. So how are we going to show that? Let's calculate the divergence of B. So what is the divergence? It is nabla, the, na, the nabla operator, dot product, the magnetic field, which is equal to the partial of Bx with respect to X, plus the partial of By with respect to Y, plus the partial of bz with respect to z, and we need to show that this is equal to zero. But now we have a small problem, right? And the small problem is that this equation is useful whenever the field is written, first of all, in rectangular coordinates, so that we can do the partial derivatives with respect to the variables x, y, and z. There are no x, y's, and z's here, because they are hidden inside of the row. And not only that, but this is assuming that we have our vector field written in the rectangular basis x hat, y hat, and z hat, so that we can select the three components to do the partial derivatives on. So clearly, this is a case in which we have this field written in, in polar or cylindrical coordinates and in cylindrical basis. But we need it, in order to calculate this, we need it in rectangular coordinates, x, y, z, and rectangular basis. Because we need the components bx, which is the x hat component, plus by, which is the y hat component, plus bz, which is the z hat component. Okay, so we need to convert from cylindrical, row, phi, z, and cylindrical basis into rectangular coordinates and rectangular basis. You know how to do that because I spent one chapter explaining that, but let's do it, okay? I'm going to do it in a very shortcut way. So, what we have here is rho and e phi hat. So let me write again b. So the problematic terms are rho and e phi hat. The rest are constants that we can take outside. Okay, so first of all, to convert from rectangular to cylindrical, the best way is to just draw the xy plane. And if you draw your xy plane, you find that you can draw a triangle, a right angle triangle, in which you have x here, you have y here, you have rho here, and you have phi here. So now you can guess all sorts of relations, such as, for example, that rho by Pythagoras' theorem is x squared plus y squared square root of that. And you can also find things like, for example, the cosine of phi is equal to x divided by rho, and the sine of phi is equal to y divided by rho, okay? So that's very easy to figure out, even without having to look at tables, just by drawing this right angle triangle. 
Now, you might not remember what if i hat is, but if i hat is a vector which points in the direction in which phi increases, so it's always tangent to the circle. Yeah, so this is if i hat. So if you don't remember how to write if i hat in rectangular basis, we can look it up, there's no problem. Actually, let's do it. If we go to the table of useful equations given in the exam, you will see here we have the unit vectors in cylindrical coordinates. So if i hat is equal to the minus sine phi x hat plus cosine phi y hat. So if i hat equals to the minus sine phi x hat plus cosine phi y hat. But if we substitute this, if we substitute this here, so we can substitute rho with this square root, that's fine. So we get rectangular coordinates. But if we substitute this here, even though we have switched to rectangular basis, now we will have phi's, which we don't want because that's still cylindrical coordinates. And we want rectangular coordinates. So what we have to do is we have to write the sine of phi and the cosine of phi in terms of x and y. Okay. So then e phi hat is equal to minus x divided by rho times x hat plus y divided by rho, sorry, the other way around, minus y divided by rho, because the sine is equal to y divided by rho, plus x divided by rho times y hat. Okay, and now we are ready because rho is this square root. So rho is simply the square root of x squared plus y squared, so we can substitute it everywhere. So we can find b in rectangular coordinates and basis. So let me write it down. So b is equal to, actually one thing you can see is that if I had, we can bring the rho, we can bring a factor 1 over rho, and then we have minus y x hat plus x y hat. So now this factor of rho can multiply with this factor of rho when we substitute if I had here. So you will get a rho squared, right? So you get mu 0 i divided by 2 pi rho squared minus y x hat plus x y hat. And rho squared, you can substitute with x squared plus y squared. So this is done. We now have it in rectangular coordinates and rectangular basis. So now we can see what bx and by and bz are. So bx is equal to the x component. So bx is equal to these constants. Let's write the constants here. Then we have this x squared plus y squared to the power of minus 1. And then we have minus y multiplying. That will be bx, right? I'm getting everything that multiplies x hat. So we can now calculate the partial of bx with respect to x. So the partial of bx with respect to x. I need to do this partial derivative. So this first we have a constant. Minus y is also a constant because we are doing a partial derivative with respect to x. So now I, I need to do the derivative of this bracket here and that's very easy. You bring the minus one down. Then you find the derivative of the bracket which is two x. And then you write the bracket again but you subtract one to the exponent, okay? So therefore you end up with, um, this is equal to mu zero i, then the two cancels out, so we get divided by pi, the negative sign cancels out, so we get x times y times x squared plus y squared to the minus two. So we can divide by x squared plus y squared to the power 2. Okay, so this is now the partial of x with respect to x. Now, by is whatever is multiplying i hat, so it will be this times x, right? So by is this. Times plus x. So now we can calculate the partial of by with respect to y, 
which is equal to a constant. Then x is a constant. And then we have to do the derivative of this with respect to y. So we get minus 1 times 2y times x squared plus y squared to the power minus 2. So therefore, we can write this as minus mu 0 i divided by pi x times y divided by x squared plus y squared squared. And finally, b said is equal to 0, right? Because there is no set hat in this expression. So the set component of the magnetic field is equal to 0. And therefore, the partial of b set with respect to z is 0. So now we have all of the elements that we need in order to calculate the divergence. We just need to add the three partial derivatives. So now, maybe I can do that. Literally add this like that. So now we are ready to say that nabla dot b is the partial of bx with respect to x plus the partial of by with respect to y plus the partial of bz with respect to z. And notice that the partial of bx with respect to x is exactly equal to the minus partial of by with respect to y. So that when we add them up, they will cancel out. And the third one is zero anyway. So the answer is zero. They cancel out. And therefore, we have proved that this magnetic field of a wire is a solenoidal field, as expected from Maxwell's equations. Yeah? Now, you will realize that this was a pretty long procedure, and that's because in this first year maths, I'm only telling you how to calculate the gradient, the divergence, and the curl using rectangular coordinates and bases. In second year, you will learn that there are shortcuts to this. And let me just, as a little spoiler, show you what this will be. So if we go to internet and then I go to Wikipedia, there is a page called Dell in cylindrical and spherical coordinates, where Dell is just the other name for NABLA. Yeah? And there is a table that shows, for example, how to calculate the gradient, the divergence, or, or the curl in Cartesian coordinates. This is what I taught you. But you can also do it in cylindrical coordinates or even in spherical coordinates. Okay, So the expressions get more complicated. But in this case, it would have been easy because we only had, for the magnetic field, we only had a phi component. So we would just have to calculate the, the partial derivative with respect to phi and then multiply by 1 over rho. But anyway, this is second year stuff. You will learn about this in second year. Okay, For now, it's OK with you converting everything to rectangular coordinates and bases and then applying the divergence in rectangular bases. OK? Very good. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Maybe I decide to reorder the videos in kits, and this turns out to be the last video problem, in which case I hope you enjoyed this chapter of vector analysis. So thank you very much, and see you in live sessions.